The Tom Woods Show, episode 662. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. All right, I'm going to give you two seconds to imagine the most fun a person can have, and then we'll compare notes. Ready? Go. All right, I'm sure we came up with the same answer. Joining Bob Murphy and me on the Contra Cruise in October 2016. Fun, games, music, and hilarity. And with nearly six months still to go, we're already nearly half full. Grab your spot at ContraCruise.com. Folks, one of the first things you figure out when you become a libertarian is that all the U.S. presidents your teachers told you were great were terrible. Learn the true history of the U.S. presidents and their crimes against liberty in our new course on the presidents. Check it out at freehistorycourse.com. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. Norman Horn joins us once again. We're going to be talking about Christian libertarianism as well as a recent debate that Norman participated in against a uh, seminary professor, so it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about that. But before we do that, I want to let you know about an episode that's coming up, well, a month from now. Why am I telling you so far in advance? It'll be coming out June 20th, 2016, so I don't know, count ahead and see what episode number that'll be. But it's going to be a debate, and that's the day that it'll be released as an episode of my show, because it's a debate I'm going to be moderating on free trade. And the debaters, on one side, Bob Murphy, and on the other side, Vox Day. Well, people on Twitter are all excited about this. It's going to be epic, and I agree. And I like both these guys. You know, you, I guess you probably know I like Bob Murphy. I co-host Contra Krugman with him. You should check that out at ContraKrugman.com. But I also like Vox Day, and I'm sure there's no problem with uh, either of them understanding that I will, of course, be an impartial moderator. I mean, maybe just to prove that, I'll take some swipes at Bob for no good reason. Although I guess I wouldn't be very impartial then, would I? But that's going to be a lot of fun and very, very interesting. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up. i got to do more debate episodes. Those are fun. I like doing debates. All right, let's talk about Norman Horn now. Norman Horn is the founder and editor of LibertarianChristians.com, which is the website of the Libertarian Christian Institute. Norman holds a Ph.D. in chemical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin, and he is currently a postdoctoral associate at MIT. Norman, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, Tom. It's great to be here. Always good to talk with you. I think it's been many hundreds of episodes since I talked to you last. So uh, we have a lot to talk about. We talked about the general subject of libertarianchristians.com, the sorts of subjects that you guys talk about there. We talked about this very phenomenon of Christian libertarianism. Let's pick up that conversation because uh, I bet even people who listen to that one don't remember a word we said. It could be that it was extremely memorable and people have memorized it, but maybe not. So I have some places I'd like to go with this, but let's start off with a recent debate you had. I guess it was on the radio with somebody from was it was it somebody at a seminary and it was on the subject of libertarianism and Christianity? Yeah, my, this was on the Up for Debate radio network a, a little over a month ago uh, with a gentleman named Dr. Al Moeller. Uh, Dr. Moeller is a really well known uh, a, a Christian theologian in uh, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He's the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, probably one of the most influential evangelicals out there right now. Um, so I had some good people working behind the scenes who who kind of helped put that together, and the whole the whole idea was to get Dr. Mueller and me on the show together and and really have a discussion about whether or not Christianity and libertarianism are compatible. Um, Dr. Mueller's position, being the very strictly ca- Christian conservative type, and and not just theologically conservative, but very politically conservative as well, is of the opinion, of course, that libertarianism and Christianity are not compatible. And uh, it was my job to try and, and correct some of those issues that he had in his mind. And to, to my, in my estimation, I felt like it went very well. Um, but there were also some real significant issues that we didn't really get to discuss. I still feel that there are a ton of, of confusions out there um, with people who, who are conservative Christians regarding what libertarianism actually is. And that's really what we're trying to do as, as the Libertarian Christian Institute now, the following of Christ, libertarianchristians.com. Uh, is to is to really try and explain this. 
idea to to Christians everywhere that the Christianity and libertarianism work really well together, and it really is the most consistent way that Christians can hold a political philosophy. Of course, there are plenty of libertarians, too, who think that Christianity and libertarianism don't work together, so maybe we'll talk about that in a little while. But I've dealt with a lot of people who fit the description of the you know of the professor of the person you just mentioned and it's true that they i know all about their point of view and they have this crazy caricature of mine or i just the other day just the other day i was reading and I, one of these days i might get rod dreyer on the show you think that would be a productive conversation probably so <laughs> yeah i mean i think that would be interesting even if uh, we don't agree he seems like a congenial guy well anyway he was he did an interview with the founder of the free state project who is uh and i don't know if he's an atheist but he's not a christian and they had a very very productive and fruitful conversation i really like now of course the comment section unfortunately over at the american conservative was deeply disappointing it's just all people throwing you know brick bats at at uh, libertarians which is a shame because because Rod Dreher was trying to find some common ground, and the comments are all you know backbiting, sniping, and whatever. But they had a very, very fruitful discussion. But one of the comments said, "You know, gosh, these libertarians. It's like libertarianism is totally incompatible with the idea of original sin." And I thought, "Wait a minute, what? Why?" Why? And, and of course, what the person I'm sure would say is that, well, you know, it, it assumes everybody's good, but it makes no such assumption. It simply says don't commit aggression against people. It says nothing about people are good, people are bad. And to the contrary, if you thought that people had an inclination toward evil, wouldn't you want to break up political power and disperse it as widely and as, as in a decentralized a way as possible? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, to that point as well, it's well known that uh, James Madison once said, if men were angels, we wouldn't need government. But in many respects, the libertarian response to that is, it's precisely because men are not angels that we should not give them power over other people in this way. And, and once we kind of realize that, the Christian critique against the state itself uh, can really come into focus as being actually very consistent with the idea that men are sinful, whether or not Whatever position you take on original sin and however you nuance that, because there are some differences in opinions there, uh, you, you can't get away from the fact that men are sinful, that men do these terrible things to each other, and that to endow people with this sort of power through the state is, is really quite lunacy. <laughs> You know, I had an episode, uh, again, a long time ago. Uh, last week I did an episode about episodes. I went through and looked through, you know, 650-plus episodes. and That's so meta, Tom. Yeah, it really it was. And I thought, well, maybe I should wait for episode 1,000 to do that. Ah, to heck with it. It's my show. I want to do it now. <laughs> and, and one of the episodes that I talked about was uh, this one with Professor George Kalansis, who has written a book on early Christian attitudes toward war. And talk about countercultural. The early Christians uh, took a, uh, a extremely anti-war position, anti-military position, and not just for the reasons that you know the standard textbook would tell you. Well, because they thought that the Roman army was pagan or whatever. That yeah, that was part of it. But it was it was a much deeper critique than that. So yeah, they had a very great aversion to just violence itself, and yeah. in part because of the persecution that they endured. And they believed that it was just flat wrong to do such things. And gee, when you look at the words of Jesus, is it really that big of a surprise? Right. It's amazing that modern Christians don't really take that into account. It's and you know, and I get all I get people saying, "Oh, well, such and such person thought you could uh, execute heretics and 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 so on." Well, yeah, okay, I, I I get that. I can I can find all kinds of people in all kinds of points of view who had all kinds of opinions. But it's interesting that exactly what you said. Saint Augustine's view was that, well, I'm glad nobody killed me. Because then I never would have had a chance to come around. So that was his view. That of course you don't. You don't actually do that. So anyway, um, you know. So when I, I talk about Kalansis, because that surprises a lot of people. Um, because I think I mean let's. Let, I, I just can't help mentioning this. Let, let's let's talk about libertarians for a minute. I do want to deal with the issue of libertarians who say, "Look, I look through the Bible and I see a lot of non-libertarian stuff in it, and a lot of non-libertarian maxims." I don't see – it seems to me like it's wishful thinking. Like you guys, you want to be libertarians, and you like being Christians, so you've come up with this weird, awkward compromise where you're living in this alternative universe where these parts of the Bible and Christian tradition just don't exist. How do you answer that accusation? 
Well, first of all, we need to go back to kind of the roots of the problem, and that's that, you know, what is, what is the biblical view of the state? And it's our, con- it's our contention at the Libertarian Christian Institute is that if you look for the whole of the Bible from front to back, that you see that the state is ultimately the enemy of God. And this goes back to even the beginning of, of the book of Genesis and, the, and even what we would call the origin story of the state in the Tower of Babel. Um, but furthermore, you know, we, we have a personal aversion to the idea of aggression itself. And that comes, from, again, from scriptural principles that say, look, you don't need to, whether you're looking at the Ten Commandments or the words of Jesus, that initiating force against other people to get what you want is clearly not within the purview of what Christian authority is. That's not something we're about. And so if we take these two, these two fundamental ideas, that the idea, the idea that the state is the enemy of God and that, and that our responsibility as Christians is to not initiate force against other people, then it's, pretty, then it's pretty easy to actually go from there to say, look, libertarianism really is the most consistent expression of, of Christian political thought. And so we can, we can start from there and really move on to, to, to understand how that applies to how we kind of proceed through typical libertarian arguments at that point. It's, it is only a special view of libertarianism insofar as we, we go to the scriptures in order to, uh, in order to see how God looks at government and the, the role of violence in society. We recognize that this also is consistent with natural law as well. And once people begin to realize that, I think that it, it becomes a lot easier to say like, oh, well, very clearly then, libertarians and Christians have a lot of common ground, even if we don't believe uh, certain things fundamentally uh, the same way, then we still have a lot of ways in which we can live peacefully with one another and not get at each other's throats whenever we come up with a disagreement. All right. I'm sorry I've been all over the place with this, but th- but but I said to you beforehand, let's just talk the way we would in person. And in person, I'm all over the place. Right? I'm not <laughs> yeah. organized. I don't, have a, I don't have an outline. I just talk about what comes to mind. Let's get back to that debate. I, I The reason I got into that whole thing about uh, Rod Dreyer was, was just that there was somebody in there who said – that uh, the idea of original sin obviously is not compatible with libertarianism. Was that the type of objection you were getting? What kind of objections was Al Mohler giving you? So Al was really under the impression that there's two big problems with libertarianism with respect to Christians. One is that it's essentially Randianism. He has this uh, really flawed understanding of libertarianism that, that it all comes out of Ayn Rand. And even if that is, you know, has some partial truth with respect to some libertarians, uh, that is certainly not the way I came to it, and it's certainly not the way uh, that so many of my other Christian libertarian friends have come to it as well, as a, and in addition to just many of my other just libertarian friends who are not Christians. So that is, that's something that we really have to, you know, to, to battle against, is to get out of the idea that, that Rand is somehow the, 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 uh, the genesis of this type of thought. And so I tried to even explain how this goes, you know, this comes back in history. And there's a law, there's a long libertarian streak in, uh, in American thought and, and in Christian theological thought, too, if you really want to get down to it. The second um, big misunderstanding from his point of view, I think, is that he feels that libertarianism is trying to become a comprehensive worldview uh, for, for all people. And that's just simply not the case. And I, I tried to explain uh, that libertarianism fundamentally is a political philosophy. It is not a comprehensive philosophy. It doesn't claim to answer all uh, all questions of ethics, all questions of, of morals, all questions of what is man's purpose in life and whatnot. Uh, it, it just needs to explain what is the proper role of force in, in civilized society. And so the, the fact that he just was – frankly, kind of unwilling to, to look at that from any other point of view was rather disappointing. Um, but I was pleased that many of the callers that called in uh, really seemed to get it. In fact, there were a couple people who said, you know, I didn't know what a libertarian was before this, but I think I'm a Christian libertarian now. And uh, th- there was a guy from Baltimore who said that, and I thought that was, a, it was very complimentary. And even the host was, I think, uh, beginning to to see some differences in in and how I thought versus how Dr. Moeller thought, and even though she probably was not fully convinced, I think she's on her way to understanding things at a little bit of a deeper level than even what Dr. Moeller is getting at. It sounds like he is thinking about libertarianism the way I think people ought to think about left liberalism, which is that it claims to be this neutral approach to public life, that we're not going to take any stands on substantial goods. We just want to carve out spaces for people to live out their own destinies the way they wish. But then in practice, 
If only left liberals thought that way. They, they, they won't leave you alone. They, they hector you about what, what do you believe about this? What do you believe about that? We're going to drive you out of society if you, if you believe such and such. We're going to force you to have interactions with people you don't want to have interactions with. That, it, it, it has gone from claiming to be this neutral point of view to, to having a very clear and uh, totalitarian style agenda, whereas libertarianism really is or let's just say ought to be what it claims to be. It really is saying – don't commit violence against other people. But then libertarianism doesn't tell you what to do after that. Now, that, and, and, and realize that if all you can say about your life is that you haven't committed aggression against other people, that's a pretty pathetic life. So libertarianism is not teaching you how to live. It's teaching you the absolute bare bones requirements of civilized life. But then what you do beyond that is up to you. And somebody like Rod Dreher and possibly Al Mohler would say, but that's very empty because it doesn't tell you what the good life is about. It's very atomistic. But the trouble is, I just don't see that there are people who could be trusted with political power who would be able to reliably tell me what the good life is all about. I will trust you know, people in my community, people in my church, my family, whatever. Th- that's where I would look to figure out what the good life is. I would not, for heaven's sake, want to know what, you know, some guy in, you know, in the, the nation's capital thinks. Well, and moreover, too, there's, <laughs> there's a strong argument here for, look, if, you're, if, if your particular point of view is leading you in a direction against what is fundamentally true about the universe— then maybe you do need to get back to something that is a bit simpler and a bit more basic than trying to ex- explicate something with with a with a lot more with, with a lot more philosophizing than is necessary. And that's sometimes the problem with with Christian conservatives is that uh, is that they have a very uh, nuanced view of morality. And we have, and I mean, I, I would consider myself very theologically conservative and morally conservative of a person, um, but. That doesn't mean that just because I have a nuanced view of all of these aspects of morality that I then it can just uh, abandon uh, this very basic principle of what is it appro- what is appropriate for me uh, for to to impose those morals on other people. I'm not allowed to do that. I have a certain responsibility to try and persuade people and to bring people over to the to to the to the Christian way of life. Uh, we call that evangelism, right? We want to do that. But that doesn't mean that I can push that upon people in a way that says you're going to do this or else I'm going to throw you in a prison or else I'll burn you at the stake or else I'll th- run, the, run you through with a sword. You know, that's the way of the world. That's the way of, that's the way of, of, of uncivilized society. That's not the way of a Christian. Do you think libertarianism becomes, if not more coherent, let's say – more complete or defensible or comprehensive? Do you think it makes more sense or is stronger in a, in a Christian context? What is Christ, does Christianity bring anything to libertarianism? That's, I guess that's what I'm asking. I think in many respects, yes, uh, it, because, of course, you know, even though that na- natural law is the basis of what we would call you know, basic libertarianism, um, there's some interesting things about uh, about anthropology and about the way in, in which we can view history even at times that I think that Christianity can bring to the table. Um, in, but, but also that's just because, you know, I believe that Christianity is the truth. And so if, I would think that, you know, if, if, because this is the truth and, and there, is, there is a lot of, uh, of, of stuff from the Bible that we can bring into this, um, that, there's, that there's, a, there's something that can be added. There's something that we can learn from it. And I think there's a, a, a way in which we can look at, especially in the way that Jesus lived, um, and realizing that his peaceful way of living, his way of, of working with, with people to persuade, to change people's lives, uh, is very coherent and, and complementary to human flourishing and, and, and what we would say is you know, going, in a sense, beyond libertarianism at that point, but is, is complementary to it. And I, I'd like to think that, that Christians can bring a lot to the libertarian movement um, that, would, that would help us explain that to more people. Is there something that you would want to say to non-libertarian but maybe conservative Christians that uh, might get them thinking. And I hope it's I, – I want it to be more than just don't impose your morality on other people. I mean I, I just I – just, yeah, I don't do that either, but I just hate that. That just sounds like such a wimpy phrase. I just – I don't like that way of thinking. I mean because they're just going to come back and say – I can't live in a society in which, yeah, I have these beliefs, and then everybody else has totally different beliefs. How can we interact with each other if we don't have some 
moral rules that are enforced, if we don't have some philosophical common ground, you are an, you're proposing that we all walk around like isolated atoms with his own private views of what the good is that he's not allowed to really act upon in society. I think that's the way they think. Yeah, that is the way they think. That's what they think that libertarians propose to them at times. And I think that, well, to that point, first of all, you know, imposing morality is not necessarily the best words we can use because everybody has a set of morals, you know, and whatnot. Everybody has ethics. And there are, and even with, with what we talk about in libertarians, we, we expect that people are not going to initiate violence against other people. And, and if I may interject very quickly, uh, left liberals do not hesitate to impose their morality. They do That's it every right. single day. People are in court because of their morality being imposed on them. So they, th a lot of the times th th those people have no hesitation about doing it either. OK, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but, but so, so we, it's not as if that we have no view on morality that we expect that people should follow. That's, that's not true. But there's a certain – subset of morals that we believe ought not to be forced upon other people and that those are appropriate for means of persuasion and and not for means of of uh, of force so and, and everybody you know has uh, believes that as well you know some people just have a different a, a, a different view about what what subset of morals that is and and the reason that our subset of morals is sli is slightly different than others is because of our more basic fundamental political view that that the fu that the foundational principle of how we should interact in society is that we do not initiate force against other people. So that's that's really the first part. But if there was something I, w I wanted to say in particular to just conservative Christians that help would help kind of con uh, lay some of the confusion that they often have is that I would say you know. Don't look towards – then here's – I'm going to quote a scripture here for a second. Don't look solely towards Romans 13 as your main view of how the state should operate. Um, that is oftentimes – I can't tell you how many times I would be in a conversation with someone about Christianity and politics. And what, I, what happens is that they so, – well, Romans 13, your, your argument is invalid is basically the, the response you'll sometimes get. <laughs> and it's really kind of amazing is that they, they believe that just by – they can proof text and throw out Romans 13 as a as just a an automatic uh, you know conversation ender. Well, that that does it, and yeah, it's a complicated scripture and it does pose some challenges to how we should interpret it. But I think if we start with Romans 13, we end up in the wrong spot uh, of where we of where we want to be in understanding how the state operates. And instead, we have to look at the rest of the Bible first and then get to Romans 13. Um, there's a lot of, of material on libertarianchristians.com. Uh, that's the Libertarian Christian Institute website that explains this in, in much more detail than we have time to do here today. Um, but I would definitely encourage all Christians who are who are investigating this issue to not just look at Romans 13 as the basis for a philosophy about the state. Are you going to send me some links because people are going to want to read about Romans 13? Do you have stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've got I've got multiple essays and papers on the on Romans 13 and exegesis of that passage, as well as other passages, including Matthew chapter four, um, Genesis in the book of Genesis, uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, we're looking we look at a lot of different places in order to get to where in order to understand this philosophy better. All right, so that'll be at tomwoods.com slash 662. Let's uh, interrupt ourselves for a minute to say something about your upcoming conference. Now, we're talking in the year 2016 here, so for anybody listening later, uh, you missed it. But maybe <laughs> there's another conference in the year that you're listening to this. Yeah, definitely. So the Libertarian Christian Institute um, has, is now hosting yearly conferences called the Christians for Liberty Conference. Uh, two years ago, Tom, if you, you may recall, we actually announced it uh, for the first time on your show. And uh, at that point in time, we were not the Libertarian Christian Institute. We were uh, sort of exploring that as a uh, to becoming becoming a five hundred one c three. We actually a, a little over a year later uh, applied for our five hundred one c three status. Got it in four days. I kid you not. Uh, unbelievably so. It was a miracle. We think. <laughs> but uh, now we are the Libertarian Christian Institute. We host these conferences. The Christians for Liberty conference this year is going to be on August sixth, twenty sixteen. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. Uh, at St. Edward's University. Uh, this is a, a really interesting ecumenical opportunity for, if you're interested in those sorts of things because it's a Catholic university. We have a, a, an Orthodox faculty sponsor and, uh, and a uh, Protestant keynote speaker, in fact, who is none other than one of your good friends and one of my good friends, Dr. Robert Murphy. 
Uh, we're very excited to welcome him uh, as our keynote uh, speaker for the day. And you'll also hear from a lot of other great Christian speakers. Um, I'll be there, of course. Uh, Jason Rink is one of my great friends will be there. Uh, Doug Stewart. Uh, we'll have Jacqueline Isaacs and Elise Daniel, who will be uh, presenting on a new book that they're publishing. Um, I'll be writing the foreword to it here very soon. And uh, uh, Dr. Mark Cherry, who's a professor at, at St. Edward's, who's our faculty sponsor, is a wonderful man who will be talking about uh, ethics and and and, and Christian thought. Uh, it's going to be a great day full of fellowship, full of good good humor, good food, and just great people. I'm really looking forward to it this year, and I just highly encourage you to, to start making your plans now uh, to come to Austin on August 6th, 2016. You can find out more about it at libertarianchristians.com slash CFL, and you can uh, sign up for our mailing list there and be informed when we open up registration. All right, let me ask you this. Um, obviously, with something like Libertarian Christians, I mean, there wasn't really such a thing in terms of a self-identified group where where they were self-consciously belonging to an ideological category. There may have been people who could be described as libertarian Christians. I can think of some. But definitely in recent years, there's been more of a conscious uh, awareness that, that we are a thing, you know, whereas, whereas that, that didn't exist before. And as that happens, in the same way that libertarianism has become more – mainstream, more people are aware of it, it gets a lot more attacks. Well, likewise, I'm sure that's been the, the, the case for you. What do you find are the most common objections? Are they the ones from Al Mohler, or are they other ones? Are there things, in other words, that you feel like you're answering every five seconds? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think, so we've, we've talked about a number of them today um, already. You know, the Romans 13 question is a big one. Uh, the libertarians try to be atomists is another one. The libertarians, you know, talking the imposition of morality issue is is another one uh, that I, I see. I think there's some policy issues though that also don't that 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 I commonly get you know either attacked by or or, uh, or get you know questioned about. And those would probably be the two most common ones would be war and charity. Um, so first off, you know, you you have <laughs> the the Christians out there, unfortunately, who are very um, into very. Uh, concerned about you know is is Islamic militants and whatnot, and believe that that the United States needs to be out there intervening all across the United all across the world in order to make sure that you know that that we don't see another 9/11 or something to that effect. Um, so that that answering that requires sort of two uh, like a two pronged response. One is the the more straight up libertarian response and you know all of your listeners i'm sure are very well aware of all of those arguments you know things like things what you talk about uh with scott horton and, and whatnot and understanding the history of the middle east and what it is uh, you know that, that we've talked about with respect to interventionism what ron paul has said for years of course um and then the, the second prong of that attack though is realizing the the christian critique of war uh you know and empire itself is is really important um, and, and as we talked a little earlier, you know, the, the early Christians had a really uh, had, a, had quite an aversion to war, and it's uh, it's really unfortunate that we have lost this aversion to violence in many respects in in the Christian tradition of late. I think that's something that we are trying very hard to reinstate, if you will, through the Libertarian Christian Institute is to is to bring us back to a more peaceful way of looking at foreign affairs um, from a Christian point of view. Um, with regards to charity, of course, you know there's there's a strong contingent of of Christians out there, often from the more uh, liberal type, the more neoliberal types, who believe that if we did not have taxation and government welfare, uh, you know, helping people out of uh, of poverty, out of uh, bad education situations and healthcare and whatnot, then things would just go downhill. And that's an economic argument, and and we again have a two pronged assault on how we would answer that. First is the more typical libertarian position where we explain solid economics and why it is that the free market works and why it is that uh, government health care is, is a bad idea and why taxation is theft and all of those sorts of nice things. Um, but then as a Christian, uh, you know, we, we would try to bring into the, to the argument that, look, this is, you know, this, is not, um, this is not something that we should be participating in in the, in the way that you think. Uh, it's the Christian responsibility to do these sorts of things, to help other people and to educate, to help people get uh, good health care and whatnot. Um, but we don't need to do that 
by initiating force and, and stealing from other people. And in fact, that's the exact opposite of what we would do, what we're called to do in the Bible. And instead of instead of actually uh, taking from other people in order to give to someone else, we recognize that it's our responsibility to produce and then to give of ourselves uh, of that and to voluntarily contribute to those sorts of endeavors. So to to pass that off as being the government's responsibility is is just not the right thing to do for Christians. And so we can come up with those two types of of, of responses there, and that should help. Uh, we hope that that helps people to really understand uh, how to how to understand this better. You know, of course, when you talk about foreign policy, it should bring to mind the whole Ron Paul thing because people would say to you, "I, you know, I love Ron Paul except foreign policy. I agree with him." except on foreign policy, right? We all had that conversation with somebody, yeah. and then somebody came up with a uh, Facebook meme. I don't know if you remember this, that was absolutely, that some people thought was just out of bounds unfair, but it was a picture of Christ, and it said, I agree with him, except about foreign policy, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, you exactly. know, except about that whole peace thing. Other than that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Jesus, except about this turning the other cheek deal. That's, yeah, right. That I can't abide. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and I, I actually thought, no, I think that is fair. I think that one's okay. I think it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. it might be. And, and you know what? Look, sometimes those things really do make people stop and think. You know, sometimes yeah. they do Sometimes they do work. All right, uh, tell me what's, what people are going to find over at libertarianchristians.com. Well, so libertarianchristians.com has just a ton of material on it now, but just uh, from a, from both a theological point of view, trying to explicate scripture and trying to understand how libertarianism uh, fits into our, our Christian theology, and also just a bunch of, of a just general libertarian ideas. And so you can learn about economics, you can learn about uh, ethics, you can learn about history, you can learn about uh, war and interventionism, you can learn about all these sorts of things, policy, politics, all of it. Uh, as well as understanding theology, as well as understanding, you know, all of all of the things that we hold dear as libertarians. So you can find all, all of this stuff there. You can find podcasts. You can find uh, you can find all all of this stuff. We we very much encourage you to come and check us out. Um, we are trying to ramp up our programs. We do these conferences now. We hope you'll come and check us out in that respect. And we'll be doing even more in the coming years as we uh, are trying to actually, you know, kind of come into our own as an organization. And we're looking forward to serving the, the libertarian community and the Christian community even more in the, in the upcoming years. Well, sounds great. Uh, that and everything else will be linked at uh, tomwoods.com slash 662. Best of luck with the conference, Norman, and thanks for your time. Hey, thank you, Tom. It's always great to be with you. All right, everybody. Libertarianchristians.com is where to go and or tomwoods.com slash 662. Now, before I let you go, I got two things to tell you. I already told you about the great episode coming up. That debate between Bob Murphy and Vox Day. Come on now. Come on. You're telling me that's not going to be great? Come on. How many times am I going to say that? All right. I got another website created by a Tom Woods Show listener. And I'll tell you something. They just had their biggest sale of the year, Bluehost, $2.95 a month on their 12-month plan. They're now having the same kind of terms, more or less, but it's a 36-month plan. Two ninety five a month. That's up through early June. I don't remember the exact date, but you better grab it right now. If you've been thinking about starting that website, if you can lock in two ninety five a month for thirty six months, you'd be crazy not to do that. So check that out at tomwoods.com slash blue. And remember you get all kinds of goodies from me, free publicity and some free WordPress tutorials to get you up and running really quickly. You get that. Check that all out at tomwoods.com slash publicity on how you get all those nice free goodies. Well, here's somebody who did that. And it's an anonymous person. He's got a website called a simplefool.com where and it's the the subheading under a simple fool is where religion and reason meet. So it's a site it, the the guy's a catholic. He's got some posts about the so-called new atheism and responding to that, he's responding to a lot of memes that you see on Facebook which are never helpful when they're on the subject of religion. Never, never, never helpful. But he goes beyond religion. He talks about uh, current events, politics, Austrian economics, just anywhere anybody is, in his view, saying something stupid in a meme in particular, because he's spent a lot of time uh, dismantling those horrible things that you see on Facebook. Anytime he sees somebody saying something wrong, he corrects it. So in, in that way, he's kind of like the meme policeman 
I talked about on a previous episode who found it a, a great site. So uh, if you're inclined to, check it out at asimplefool.com. And of course, I will be linking to it as the listener episode mentioned at tomwoods.com slash 662. All right, I got a couple of authors coming up this week. I got Wendy McElroy, who has a new book on the alleged problem of rape culture. Uh, she doesn't believe in it, by the way. And Sheldon Richman, who has not been on the show in quite some time, has a brand new book out, Against the Constitution. Can you take it? Can your brain not explode listening to that episode? You're just going to have to test yourself, I think. Stick around this week and tune in. Thanks so much for listening. See you then. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.